Yeah, this is just good. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Boys in the Hood. This was actually suggested to me by one of my Patreon supporters, Mark. Thank you guys for the suggestion from watching movies from 1991. And this is the first one on the list that I've seen. It's actually a film that I've never seen in full. The subject matter is actually something of big interest to me. I watched the 92 L.A. Riot documentary that National Geographic did a few years ago. And I remember just turning it on on television when we were on a location shoot in Squamish and I just watched the whole thing in my hotel room all the way night through and it captured the scale of anger and frustration and the income and living scale of the African American community in LA at that time and just showed the rage that they had for such obvious racism that was happening to them. And Boys in the Hood focuses kind of on the urban life and the lifestyles and the heartache and the challenges that youth in that community grow up with. And it's a lot smarter than I thought it would be. I already knew it was an Oscar nominated film. John Singleton at the time was the youngest director to ever be nominated. I think he still is. He also was nominated for writer and back in 1991 this was his first major film so it's a huge outing for such a director. The story of this film is fantastically portrayed by the cast despite it having somewhat of a simplistic sort of nature to it. It's all of the subtleties that are around everything that revolves around our characters that are just so well entwined. The fact that there is a helicopter constantly in the background, whether you can hear it or there's lights passing over the town, the means and how the degradation of the area and the positioning of certain facilities really puts these people in a lock situ in a locked situation. Lawrence Fishburne's character is kind of like a toned down Malcolm X sort of character in this film as Cuba Gooding Jr.'s father, and he has many moments of truth that he spouts throughout the film. He talks about just the environments that they are living in and the situation that they are being forced into absent-mindedly. And Cuba Gooden Jr. is in this movie. Remember when we all thought he was like super duper talented and then he won for Jerry Maguire and then things kind of went downhill after that? This wasn't his debut but it was still a very powerful performance from him and there's a lot of really talented people in this film. As I said, Lawrence Fishburne, Cuba Gooding Jr., Morris Chestnut, Angela Bassett, and obviously Ice-T. Ice-T's not bad in this movie. I was actually kind of surprised. He's pretty decent, even though he's drinking on a bottle the whole time. It's not so much him that kind of odds me out. It's the guy with the, uh, the baby soother. This dude was weird. But apparently this was a fad back in the time because apparently if you were on E, you had the, uh, the tendency to possibly grind your teeth and that's what baby soothers were being used for. I'm not joking. Again though, as I said, the story is very simple, but there's so many hard-hitting elements in this story, whether it be from the living environments that they are in, to the ridicule they face from police, not just white cops, but black cops. The one racist black cop in this movie is really hard to watch. He just rivets you in such a horrible way. The two scenes in this movie are so anger-fueled, it's so discerning, so disgusting to see. These are examples that John Singleton went through while growing up himself, as well as from friends in that environment. And then there's the emotion in this movie. It draws on a lot of personal experiences from the director as well as the actors, but the emotion in this film, you can definitely tell, is felt from someplace real because the last 40 minutes of this film is so raw. Even though you're terrified of what's gonna come, you don't wanna turn away because you're just so engaged. Its ending is rough. It's such a rough ending. But upon watching it, I understood why it had such a claim because it doesn't take an easy route. It takes a rough, rough goddamn route, but it's not unfounded. It's a realistic retelling of things that have happened in these areas of LA. It doesn't hold back, it, neither with its brutality or its hard-hitting reality. In the end, Boys in the Hood is actually something that I knew was good, but I didn't expect it to be that good. 
I was thoroughly riveted throughout the entire film. The performances from everyone in this movie are fantastic. A lot of really well-written scenes. There are some scenes that are used for lectures, especially with criminology, and it's just got an ending that you will not forget. Like, I'm never gonna forget this ending. It's just so rough. But in the end, Boys in the Hood is a fantastic movie. There's a reason why it's in this book that I've got here, The Thousand and One Movies You Need to Watch Before You Die. This is a 2005 edition, but I don't want to update it because I love the cover. Why would I want to get rid of Indiana Jones on the cover? But it's one of the movies to watch in this book, and it's completely understandable as to why. Boys in the Hood, for me, is something that you should see. It's definitely an experience to watch, and even if you might be thrown off a little bit by how simplistic it is, this movie was made off of $5 million, so you have to keep that in mind. And back in 91, that was actually technically a lot of money for someone like John Singleton to be given, considering the subject matter of his film. So in the end, I'm going to give Boys in the Hood a 7 out of 7. This is a phenomenal movie. It is really goddamn good. I would highly suggest you guys watch it. And after this, watch the 92 LA Riot documentary that... Well, since it's National Geographic, does that mean it would be on Disney Plus? <laughs> Ooh, that's a... That'd be a rough watch. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise... See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.